bounty hunter Walter Fernandez has one key mission, to track down and catch wanted criminals and bring them back before the courts. Fugitive recovery. They tell you, if you don't open the door, we're going to kick the door. Walter and his bounty hunting partners will stop at nothing to catch their prey. If I'm looking for you, I'll stay on you until I wear out the very last lead I can get. I, I will stay on you. I'll flip every stone. I'll chase you from one end of the earth to the other. Guys, come on. Going after drug dealers and murderers alike, bounty hunters never know what kind of fugitive might be waiting for them behind those closed doors. Take it down, take it down, take it down. And to what extreme they will fight to stay out of prison. a.m. and the sun is about to rise on the streets of New Jersey. He gave us a Redmond Street address. This is Walter Fernandez's hunting ground, and he's about to strike. This is a young kid. We got to be careful with him. You know how these young kids are. They tend to want to run. Yeah. All right. Working with his regular crew, Walter is on the hunt for a man in his early 20s who's wanted in court for skipping bail on drug charges. Now considered a fugitive, the drug dealer is being stalked by professional bounty hunter Walter Fernandez and his highly trained crew, the Metro Fugitive Recovery Squad. Walter has been tracking down fugitives for the last 14 years, and his experience makes him one of the very best. If you jump bail, you better hope that your bondsman doesn't send this guy after you. Right now, we're going to 11 Gardena. We're going to go try to see if we grab this guy up. If you get arrested, you get out on bail with a bail bondsman. You're scheduled for court. If you don't show up to court, the judge considers you an FTA. They send out a failure to appear notice. Henceforth, you get a warrant. And it's called the bench warrant, actually. You get a warrant for your arrest. And at that point, you're a fugitive. Which means that for Walter and his crew, you are now fair game. There's a green cougar. What year is this cougar? 2000? That's got to be it right there, that green cougar. And make no mistake about it, for these guys, it is a hunt. I became a bounty hunter uh, back in 92. I'm pretty aggressive at getting what I want. And it helps me when I'm hunting because I don't give up. As daylight breaks, Walter and his squad strategically approach a house where they suspect the fugitive is hiding. At this early hour, the bounty hunters are confident he's still in bed. The house is right there, bro. That, that's his car right there. That's the co-signer's car. So, right, you see the lights on? That window upstairs, that's there. So don't get in the view of the... The crew stealthily move towards the house, careful not to give away their presence. For bounty hunters, a surprise attack is one of their greatest assets. With the squad strategically positioned around the house, Walter makes the first move to assess the activity going on inside. No one is more dangerous than a fugitive running from the law. So if the drug dealer saw them coming, Walter and his men could be in for a dangerous surprise. Whenever drugs are involved, there's always a threat that the situation could turn violent. In my 15 years experience, I've been on the uh, staring down the barrel of a weapon before, and it's not a, a pleasant experience. We wear body armor, and that's probably the best protection you can have. Hopefully, they don't shoot you in the head. Check it out. Check it out. I want to talk to her soon. There are ways in there. We just don't know if they're inside right now or not. The Metro Fugitive Recovery Squad is a blended mix of speed, strength, and smarts. I'm a runner. I'm a great runner. You know, I'm, I'm a very healthy guy. Walter must utilize each agent's specific skills to successfully capture his prey. If someone has to go through a window or something, they'll be me. You know, no one else, that'll be me. You good? In New Jersey, currently, there is no law yet governing bounty hunters. If a bounty hunter is sure that a fugitive is hiding inside a private residence, he has the right to break in and make the arrest. This right dates back to an 1872 U.S. Supreme Court decision. The way to make entry if someone doesn't want to open a door 
first thing that comes to mind is, you know you have the right to enter. If I know you're inside, then yeah, I'll do what I have to do. If I'm not sure, then there's other ways. You can, you can look through a window. If there's a window that I can boost my partner up into and look in, if they see, if the window opens, I'll push my partner right through the window, let him go inside. And believe me, once people see you going through their window, they're gonna react and they're gonna come out and say, hey, what are you doing? Act like, oh, I didn't hear you knocking. And you know they're lying, but at that point, you know something's going on. Then you have two choices. Kick the door down and go in if you feel that your partner may be in imminent danger or wait for your partner to come open the door for you. That is a game time decision that you make at the moment. You should have kept his radio. That's how he'll be good. Trust me, if you see someone flying out the window, it won't be him. If anything goes wrong inside the house, Ali will have to take on the drug dealer and his backup crew alone. As a result of a court ruling, New Jersey bounty hunters cannot carry firearms, so Ali must rely on his baton, pepper spray, speed, and strength. Like a shot, Walter and his crew storm the house with lightning speed, giving their wanted fugitive little time to react. This quick arrest was a textbook intervention. Unfortunately for Walter, bounty hunting and its unpredictable game of cat and mouse is not always this easy. No, I just want to make sure, because you don't want, you don't want us to take you in there. After 15 years of hunting down fugitives, Walter knows who he is up against. Your general fugitive is usually a drug dealer. Uh, they can be, they tend to be aggressive. They're usually carrying guns or knives. They're the vine type. They're usually runners. So we're going to be transporting him now to Cinnamon and He's not too happy, as you can see but we gotta do our jobs. Now in custody, the fugitive drug dealer will be escorted to the county jail, where he'll wait to face justice once again, this time from behind bars. I became a bounty hunter uh, back in 92. That was my first interest in bounty hunting. I, I... I had a bounty hunter who was supposed to come into the high school for career day, the high school I go to. Uh, what happened is he never came in, but I did so many things to get into his class to listen to him speak that I had to try to get in it somehow. So I spoke to a few of my friends that are on the police force. They told me I had to talk to a bail bondsman, and one of them knew the local bondsman, so he made a connection for me. And I spoke to him, and sure enough, he, he got me a few cases, and I got my first try at it. I wasn't very successful, but I got my first try. Bounty hunting is anything but simple. Finding a fugitive who's trying to escape the law is a delicate and challenging task. Unlike the police who have Miranda rights and probable cause to assist them, bounty hunters have no formulas for success and certainly no guarantees. Every case is different and requires its own plan of attack. My best advice to a young guy that wants to be a bounty hunter is simple. At the beginning, don't quit your day job. It's going to take a lot of time and perseverance, like any other business. You're going to have to develop a clientele and develop a reputation before you can make it in this business. And there's no guarantee you're going to make it. Carjacking Central. Yeah. Careful when you go through an intersection because somebody may might drive hit you. a stolen car and may hit you. The one thing in common between all of Walter's cases is the action and danger involved in chasing down a fugitive. Whether he's hunting down a drunk driver or a suspected murderer, Walter always prepares for the worst case scenario. He knows the minute a fugitive catches him off guard, his life is immediately put at risk. For Walter, every new case starts out the same way. Someone gets arrested and hires a bondsman to help them post bail and remain free until their future court date. When the defendant fails to appear in court at the prescribed date. This is the new one the court issues an arrest warrant and holds onto the bail. At that point, the bondsman hires a bounty hunter to bring back the fugitive and help him recollect his bond. Steve, give me the file for David across. The bondsman gives the bounty hunter all the relevant information about the fugitive, but it's rarely enough to locate him. The basic information that we have in this file is the person that signed, all their information, where they work, um, 
uh, they have a few and uh, a few references number, the car information, where they work, how long they've been working, the supervisor's name, and basically in the other sheet we have all the defendant's information, which it tells us his weight, his date of birth, his address, previous address, where does he work, and you know, if he's been arrested before that. Although this is a good starting point, the chances of finding a fugitive at the address listed on the bond agreement are slim. So when Walter gets a new case, he'll have a lot of research to do before finding his prey. I don't think he wants to talk tonight. Working out of his home office, Walter reviews the fugitive's public records online for any clues that will lead him to his whereabouts. In bounty hunting, this research is called footwork. What I do there is I have a uh, website I go on where we can do, uh, you know, we can run social security numbers, uh, name searches, basic skip tracing. Um, you know, phone numbers, cell phone numbers, anything that is a public record, we can access it through that website. So that's basically what I do is skip tracing on the computer, see if I can get a better location. Usually through the social, with the name and date of birth, we can track down, I would say, probably about 70% of people. The other 30%, you got to work a little harder and go different routes to catch them. Sometimes on a street level, different things. What's up, man? How you doing? Hi. Right, right. We may get an address as an empty lot. You don't want to find. You don't want to go out at three in the morning, go to an address and find out. Oh, it's an empty lot. So you do footwork during the day to verify information, and then at night we do our hits. It's like okay, this. wait a minute. Wait a minute. What vehicle do we have for him? When the information from the computer turns stale, they have to trade up their home office for the streets of New Jersey and physically search out the leads they need. How you doing? Bail enforcement, ma'am. Can I ask you a question? Bail enforcement. Fugitive recovery. Here's my ID. They're looking for a man called Stephen Caldebra who was arrested on drug-related charges. Caldebra was suspected to be out of the state for the past few months, but reliable sources now tell the squad that he's back in town. Walter and his crew meticulously check out every lead they have. That includes questioning the neighbors. To gain their trust and willing cooperation, Walter and his men use a high degree of tact to get the information they need. How you doing, bro? You live here? Neighbors have a tendency of not talking, but it depends on the neighborhood you're in. If you're in a bad neighborhood, predominantly Hispanic, and not only Hispanic, but say predominantly, for instance, I'm Dominican. Say the whole neighborhood is Dominican. Dominicans are a very tight-knit group. So it'd be very difficult to get another a neighbor who's Dominican to give up a Dominican. So a lot of times, and this might not sound right, but you have to play the race card. If you're looking for a black guy, you ask, try to find a white old neighbor, and they'll probably give him up, or vice versa. Sorry about that. All right, let's go. Nah, negative. As soon as night falls in Jersey City, Walter is getting ready for the next phase of this operation. By cross-checking the different information he's uncovered today, Walter has managed to pinpoint Caldebra's whereabouts to his mother's house. The second door, 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 the air is filled with tension as Walter and his troops are about to raid the home of the fugitive's mother. Everyone's wearing full body armor for protection as they can't be sure how Caldebra will react. He may very well be armed and dangerous. I got movement, I got movement. Lights. Fugitive squad, ma'am. Metro fugitive recovery, bail enforcement. Looking for your son. Take a look around. All right, can I get it? Sure. You can, you can, you can I pull somebody down? I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. You understand if we find him here, you can be charged, right? Oh, he's not here. Okay. He's not here. You usually want to do it early in the morning, and I'm talking between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's usually when you do your hits, because that's when you're going to catch people in bed, sleeping. They're usually less prone for violence at that hour in the morning. While one bounty hunter speaks with the defensive mother, 
Walter and Ali make use of this valuable opportunity to search the house for helpful clues. I only saw this two days ago. Yes, but I asked you today, Jeff. Did he ever, when, when was the last time he stayed here? Exactly. A couple days ago, I just asked her. How many days ago? This time, ago, the search doesn't yield any tangible That's results. I bet you anything, he wasn't there tonight because there's only two beds mm -hmm. and they're both sleeping on it. And the couch wasn't yeah, there. So he's not there now. So he's not there. Yeah. My I just wanted to put on that was front to, to scare right. her. You see how oh, no, that was she good. got? That was good. I'm glad because you know, when I took her in the back, see, I, when I took her in the back, I softened her up. So yeah. it was good that you got yeah. her well done because oh, I, I was I, able yeah. to soften her up. It works perfectly. You know, sometimes the, the frustration, you, you you have to deal with the frustration in this job. Sometimes people are horrible liars, as she was, terrible liar. And, you know, the trail could go cold, but I have enough information to where I, if it does, I can I can heat it up again. Because I, 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 I again, I, I got into his mother's mind, and that's key for this job is getting into the minds of the people involved. When you get to them, they start thinking about what you said, and I had the right words for her. I won't tell you what I said because I like to keep that to myself, but I, I had the right words for her to open up to me and tell me what I needed to know and get her to agree to do certain things for me so that we can catch him. Playing mind games is simple. It's a psychological war. Half of bounty hunting, half of tracking down and catching your, your skip or your fugitive is psychological. If you can trick them into believing whatever it is you're saying to them, you're gonna get them. You can promise them, you tell them whatever they need to hear. That's what I call it. Once you get to know who you're looking for, you'll figure out what it's gonna take and what you have to say to them. Once you trick them into believing whatever it is you're telling them, you'll catch them. 60% of the time, they'll come to you. All you gotta do is be convincing, have a golden tongue. Back at the office, the Metro Fugitive Squad is about to tackle another fugitive. You know, what company called? This time, Walter has his sights on a man wanted for a driving under the influence charge. Bardales, remember him? Playing hide and seek with the authorities for some time, this fugitive has been bouncing from one state to another, trying to escape justice. Because I got a snitch that knows him. See? Luckily for Walter, one of his closest informants knows the fugitive personally. Bounty hunters rely on their network of informants for the hidden clues they can't find anywhere else. Purchasing useful bits of information from them when necessary, Walter knows informants are often the only way to obtain fresh intelligence on wanted fugitives. He knows everybody in town. He's a, he's a, he's a savage. If he don't know him, nobody does, especially in the Latino community. Right here, Walter right secretly here, right here. contacts his informant by phone and arranges to meet with him. Walter is hoping that the informant will share with him the lead he needs to apprehend his fugitive. When dealing with informants, first of all, they're, they're looking to make a buck. So what's on the line for them is making some money because they may be broke as hell. Maybe they need some extra money to go get their next high. The other thing from my aspect and for their safety is we, we really have to guard their safety. When we deal with them, we usually see them somewhere outside of the neighborhood where they might live. They might, you know, call me and say, hey, listen, uh, you know, the guy's here at such and such place, you know. So they, they tend to hide, and you have to help them hide because you don't want them to be seen. You don't want the neighborhood to know that who, who the informant is because you can get them killed. ¿En qué casa que yo vivo? ¿En la amarilla aquella? En la última casa. ¿En la última...? As... De, de la amarilla la otra. La, la, la que está al lado de la amarilla, al costado. The informant tells Walter about a house where he saw the fugitive a couple of days ago. Bad thing is we're not sure if anybody's home. Wasting no time, Walter and Ali quickly rush over to the location to investigate this promising lead. While Walter approaches the front door and talks to the owner, Ali covers the side alleyway in the back of the house in case the fugitive tries to escape. It's a good place to, um, to be in the backyard is to always corner the house so you can see all the windows and stuff. Make sure, you know, and the other guy, his job in the front is to corner the other side of the house. The best thing is, you know, when you usually sneak around the house at night, you know, you never want to face the window in case they see you. You don't know, you know, you don't know what these people have. So, you know, best thing is cover yourself, you know, the best you can, you know. 
the job is dangerous. I mean, you, anything could happen, but, you know, there's certain things you could do to pretty much cover yourself. So I believe this is the best position to be. The fugitive isn't there. In fact, he's already left New Jersey. All right, just found out the guy's in Florida. But fleeing to another state will certainly not stop Walter and his team. The gray buildings of Jersey City give way to the palm trees of Daytona Beach as Walter and his right-hand man, Reggie Tyler, fly down south in search of their prey. New sources put the fugitive at his sister's house in Florida. Jumping across state lines, Walter knows this man has no intention of returning to court, so it is up to him to get him and bring him back to justice. OK. All right, Reggie, our target tonight, Norman Bardalis. OK, we got him on a warrant from New Brunswick. OK, we got everything we need right here. We got the address from Florida. We got our authorization. We're good to go. Hello, Norman. Hello? Walter double checks his information by making a mock phone call to the house he is stalking. Teresa. Okay, perdón. That was him. Let's go. That was him that answered the phone. Let's roll. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Walter moves towards the front door while Reggie checks out the back. Although the suspected fugitive doesn't have a history of violence, Walter isn't willing to take any chances. Desperate people can sometimes resort to desperate measures to stay away from jail. I treat all cases the same way, in the sense that they're all dangerous to me. Come out there. Yeah. Necesito ver a Norman. Norman? Sí. He's not here. Usually, it turns out you get more resistance from a DUI or something than you do from these big gangbangers. Was it you I just spoke to on the phone? Yeah. OK, where's Norman at? Oh, man. So yeah, don't let that. These little, little cases, they, they're, they're not smart. If they, skip, uh, if they skipped out on a little case to begin with, that, that's not very smart. So I find I get more resistance from the bigger, from the small ones rather than the big ones. A person wanted for DUI can come out and stab you with a knife, just like a person wanted on a murder. So to me, everyone is the same until you show me differently. I treat them all the same. The fugitive is not at home, but is expected to return shortly. All right, do me a favor. Um, park somewhere where you can see, because what we're going to do is when he gets here, actually, just park close. When he gets here, he'll be here between 11.30 and 12. I'll hit you on the radio. I'm going to stay in here. You wait outside. When I hit you on the radio, just come on. This unexpected delay gives Walter the chance he needs to perfect his operation. All right, yeah, let him walk in. Once he walks in, you come on in behind him. All right, but otherwise, stay out of sight. Try to be as inconspicuous as possible. By effectively talking to the fugitive's family and getting inside their heads, Walter is able to secure their trust and cooperation. For Walter, the power of mental persuasion is an essential weapon. A few hours later, the fugitive returns back to the family home as expected. Facing DUI charges in New Jersey, the fugitive did not expect a bounty hunter to be waiting for him inside his sister's Florida home. Norma. The man offers no resistance as Walter explains to him why he's being arrested. Being caught completely unexpectedly has left this fleeing fugitive speechless.
When we make an arrest out of state, deep south, where we have to go, maybe if it's a, if, if you drive, it may take you 10 hours to get there. Usually I'll opt to fly because I don't like to drive far. So in a plane, when transporting a prisoner, first of all, you have to pick what airline you're gonna put them on, because not all airplanes or airlines let you have them handcuffed. And secondly, to clear security, you have to get there a little earlier than everyone else. And in our case, we go through the usual security process. Then the prisoner goes in the back in a separate office with airport security and us. They do a, a, a more in-depth search of the prisoner. They verify the documentation, make sure he is a fugitive and then we go on about our way into the plane. When we get to the plane, we have to alert the, the, the check-in desk that we're there. What they do is they board us first, and we get off the plane last. And the only seats they give us are the very last ones all the way in the back of the plane where the seats don't even lay back. So you have to sit straight up in the last row of seats, and that's pretty much how it goes. After delivering the fugitive to the local authorities in New Jersey, Walter pays a visit to his bondsman to collect the rewards of his efforts. That's, uh, Recovering Brown. fugitives can be a very lucrative business. I normally pay Walter 10% of the face of whatever the bail is. So for the bail that, in Florida, he gets $500. I cover the flight fees. I cover any expenses that he inquired, the hotel, and the car. And, you know, the flights, I, I, that's my responsibility, to take care of that. It's a good deal for everyone involved, because if the fugitive is not caught, the bondsman could be forced to pay the whole amount of the bail. And once in a while, they come across cases with enormous bonds that can range between 50000 and a million dollars. The potential for a 10% cut on these types of cases is a very appealing payout to a bounty hunter. There is no bond I will not touch. The bigger the bond, the more motivated I am, okay? The big bonds, there's one thing. When you're looking at a million dollar bond, you know right away that's not gonna be an easy case. You know that right away. It's not gonna be something you're gonna knock on the door and boom, there he is. Those are usually what we tend to call hoop dreams. You hope to catch one, you work on it because you don't turn it down because you don't know what could happen, but you're not gonna catch one of those every day of the week. So when you get it, it's a beautiful opportunity and you work it until you run out. Norman Bardalis. To be able to go after such lucrative cases, Walter first has to get the bondsman to call him and hire him as the bounty hunter for the job. In this business, your reputation is paramount. Your reputation is the number one thing you have to guard because the better your reputation, the more work you're gonna have. Bounty hunters have to work very hard to have their work recognized and respected. Some of their most ferocious critics are police officers who have had their opinion tainted by a few bad seeds. The relationship with the police, between police and bounty hunters, is, it's an iffy one. Some places you go to and they're, they're great. Some places you go, they'll kick you out of their town. It's an, in our opinion, an envy thing. They feel that we're doing a job that they had to train for years or months or whatever, go to the academy to be able to do. We're doing it, and in their minds, we're not even trained, and that's the first mistake is that we are trained, but we're trained in one specific thing. The police are trained in a wide variety of things. They have a lot of different people they have to be. Us, we're one person. We are the bounty hunter. We're coming to arrest you. So we deal with one thing and one thing only. That's the fugitive. So it's an iffy one because of that. In our opinions, in our industry, it's an envy thing. Fortunately for Walter and his partners, their spotless reputation has earned them respect in the field and helps them get information from places where others would simply hit a brick wall. Guys, this is gonna be a good one, man. Cops know, cops know him, he hides in the crawl space. You know, this guy, you know, we don't have a photo. He told us he's a little uh, shorter than me. He weighs about 150 pounds, you know, so. Might make it happen, you know? Come out here, make me The police gave Walter a photo of a man he's been looking for for a few weeks. The friendly officer even gave them an address. He's 20 something years old? I don't know about that. This guy looks a lot much, much, much older. He got two earrings, so one on the inside. So a little goatee in the bottom. Let's see what we could do. Shouldn't be bad goatee in the bottom. That's not common. 
Hmm. That's not common. Go to the bottom like yeah. that. Once we get there, if he's not out on the stoop, as soon as we pull up, I don't. Are these high rise or low rise buildings? Dude, they're just gonna be projects. They're just project buildings. Yeah, so people are gonna see us one way, one way out. One way in, one way right, out. That's it. So keep your eyes open in. to the sides. As soon as you see him, just jump out at him. All right. There's no time to do nothing. No drive-bys yeah, or nothing. nothing. If you see him, jump out at him. Right, so which address do you want to pull up to? We're going to go to the one the cop gave. Three, two. We got, well, that's all going to be in the same next section. All right, so let's, let's do it. All right. 103, 103. When we pull in here, we're going to make this left. All right, if he's sitting on a stoop, we're going to pull just ahead of him. You guys need to stop just behind him. And we're going to try to okay. limit him, yeah, limit him on which way he can run. Walter and his partners waste no time. As soon as they get close to the address they are looking for, they spot a man who matches the description. Ali's quick reflexes allow him to jump out of the car and catch the suspected fugitive in seconds. We need some ID. I don't live out here. Yeah, he got here. He got here. On both sides? Yeah. Everything with this arrest seems to be going perfectly, except for one small detail. Hey, that's him, bro. Look at the eye. I can tell you that's him. That's him. That's him. That's him. Hell no! They've got the wrong man. That's not me, man. I'm trying to tell you, what's that name like? For real, like, I'm back here playing mad, and I wouldn't even be here if y'all was Hold on to it for a second. Hold on to it. Walter double checks his intelligence and confirms the man's identity with the neighbors. Everything points to a case of mistaken identity. I ain't never been hopped out on like this. I'm back here playing mad. I see these jeeps pulling up and coming out front to see who it is. And y'all. <laughs> And he's scared as hell. <laughs> I'm like, you know, right, I'm, I'm just, look, let me show you. Right. Yeah, you was looking shady, chilling in the corner yeah, like that. You know what I mean? I wanted to see who was turning the corner. Oh, my God. I just straight, man. <laughs> scared as hell. You see that? You saw that? So it's, it's, it's not him. That was close, though. Yeah, that was. The bounty hunters will take a few minutes to check the neighborhood and talk with the locals. But if their fugitive was here when they showed up, chances are he fled the scene when they arrested the wrong guy. All right, nothing going on at the front door. We're still knocking, trying to make entry. Copy that, 101. Walter's job sometimes draws him to the seedier parts of town. In Jersey City, the gang-infested projects is as violent and dangerous as they come. The Crips and the Bloods, two very powerful gangs, are fighting for territorial supremacy. You don't want to mix Crips and Bloods, and let alone in the same projects. So that, that, that's, that's dangerous. To go through these projects here, man, you, you have to have your balls well in place here, because anything can happen. And if you're scared, you're going to be up shit creek. You're going to get hurt. They have a tendency of shooting off the rooftops and the windows. So it's, it's really un, an unpredictable environment. You got drug dealers in all the buildings, because they, 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 they used to hold stash in one building, get the money in the others, deliver the drugs to a customer in another building. So you have a lot, of, a, a lot going on in a closed area. And if you are, quote unquote, the law coming through here, you, you're pretty much surrounded. So anything can come at you from any angle. And what are you going to do? You know, so the danger is in not knowing what's going to come at you and when it's going to come. You just have to be ready and have a little bit of luck. Hopefully nothing happens and you walk out unscathed. This is the place where one of Walter's fugitives, a drug addict with a history of violence, has last been seen. The fugitive has been eluding Walter for several weeks in an attempt to avoid jail time. Coming into the projects to investigate cases like these is extremely dangerous for Walter and his men. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. You come here at night, you'll find them getting high. This is a dime bottle of crack. Those types of cases could be my most dangerous cases because you don't know what to expect. The young kids are real unpredictable. And most of the bloods and the crips in this area are teenagers. And they're unpredictable. You don't know what type of reaction you're going to get from them. With the threat of violence as real as it is, the crew wears their bulletproof vests underneath their street clothing. The last thing Walter and his men need is to be mistaken for cops. In the projects, wearing a cop badge is like wearing a bullseye on your chest. He's not home now. You might catch him later. Come through about 3 in the morning, you'll catch him in bed. Hey, how you doing? Hey, guys. Hey, how are you? 
Like most law enforcement personnel, bounty hunters form a tight-knit group. They regularly see each other outside of work with their families. Today, Reggie has organized a picnic, and everyone from Metro Fugitive Recovery Squad is there. No, no, it was a hill. It's a time to rejoice about their best solved cases and a time to reflect about the ones that didn't have such a happy ending. This is also a good time for the bounty hunters to get to know the people they work with every day a little better. Ex-policewoman Tammy Ellis has been working with Walter for over a year. She's one of only two women on the team and one of the few female bounty hunters in the state. It's exciting, you know, knowing that you, something we have to do, somebody we have to get, and knowing that other people are safe on the street once we get these guys, once we get the guys or women or whoever it is that we have to get. It's exciting, I love working with the guys, you know. For Reggie Tyler, it's all about helping people make a better life for themselves. I get, I get an enjoyment out of about just being safe, trying to do the right thing. The right thing is people that just jump bail, really shouldn't be out there. Um, handle your responsibilities, basic. You don't want to walk all day looking 24 hours over your shoulder. You have kids, you have family that worry about you. Nobody should have to go through the ordeal of having to come to jail to come visit you inside a cell. And we're trying to keep you out of there. You may have to go back sometime, but our main goal is to try to keep you out of there and get you on the right track. The only ones who seem to suffer from this lifestyle are the ones staying behind. The job can be very stressful in my family life because a lot of times work tends to overlap with home life. There may be days where I may have promised I'm going to take my wife out somewhere and the day or time will come and all of a sudden, boom, I got to go on a job and I'll be gone for two or three days and then I got to come back and make it up. You know, so it's stressful because I don't have that much time to be home when I'm busy. I may go away for a week, may go away for three days, come home for one day and I'm gone again. So it can be real stressful at home and it's sometimes hard to manage. Walter's wife, Wendy, loves her husband, but hates his work on the streets. When Walter becomes focused with his work, he often forgets to call and Wendy can't help but fear the worst. I don't like Nicky I don't like it. Too dangerous. I don't know if you're coming home or not, so. A lot of ups and downs because the job is hard. And it, it causes, at times, it, causes, it, it crosses family with job. And I mean, there may be days where I may have said, we're going to go out at a certain time, and I may not even come home that day. So she's all ready for me to come home. And I have a, when I get focused on work, I, it's just, I get tunnel vision, and it's just work. So the correct, the right thing for me to do on days would be call and say, I'm not coming home. I'll, I'll just forget. I'll just keep going and going and going. I don't call. I don't say anything. And that's just me. When, when, I'm, when I'm on a job, I'm 100% I'm focused, and, and I don't like to break my, tr my focus. And I just forget about calling anybody. It's just all about work. And a lot of times, it takes away from family time. And, 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 and this one here and these other two takes time away from everybody. Bounty hunting isn't a job, it's a way of life. There's no clear line between what's work and what's play. The moment the barbecue comes to a close, Walter and his friends are back on the streets, doing what they do best, catching fugitives. They have a new lead in the Stephen Caldebra case. The elusive drug dealer has recently been spotted in an apartment complex on the outskirts of town. This time, bounty hunter Tammy Ellis is part of the strike team. I don't treat women any different than the guys. The women on the team are the same as the guys. They have a job to do, they have to execute, and they have to execute to the fullest. So they get no different treatment than anybody else. While Ali Mustafa covers the back door of the complex, Walter and Tammy try to sweet talk their way in the front. The use of women in strategy, that's another story. The women, they have, a, they're able to get in and out of situations and places easier and more effectively than one of my guys would. So the women, I tend to use them a lot in bar scenes. If I want to get a guy out of a, a, a club, I'll let them go in there. They'll dress real sexy and 
turn the guy on, get him thinking he's going to get some, walk him out of the bar or the club or wherever he is. Once we get him outside, it's another story. And you should see the look on some of these guys' faces when they realize they got had. How you doing, baby? All right. Looking for Rasa. The advantage to having a, to using a woman when you're in a house is a lot of times if you're dealing with somebody's mother, a girl might be able to bring a mother down much easier than myself or one of the big guys that work with me because it might be more intimidating. A woman can talk another woman down, or even another guy, if it's a bad situation, a woman may be able to talk him down. The intel they have on Caldebra leads them to believe that he will not go down without some form of resistance. He might try to run, or he might choose to fight back. Eight, five, six, right? Either way, Walter and the crew need to be alert and ready for whatever's thrown at them. They are not taking any chances. The fugitive might be hiding anywhere in this apartment, and they do not want to be caught off guard. Okay. I think they're in the threes. But this one, he wouldn't have enough time to get in. We came here, they Once again, it seems that Caldebra was one step ahead of the bounty hunters. All right. Sorry to bother so early. Have a good morning. Thank you. So it's back to the office for some footwork. Walter's got a truckload of cases on his desk, and his partners are eager to score some points. Walter decides that he wants to go after a young woman charged with drug possession. She's been on the loose for a few days now, and his sources offer some good information about her current whereabouts. When I plan an arrest, we usually get together in the office first, or we'll get together on the street in a parking lot. We'll go over each file, I'll give the guys a rundown of every case we're going to be doing. I'll let them look at the mugshot. And then to, to back that, when we get to the area, to the house that we have to, so quote unquote, hit, we'll look at the file one more time. I'll remind the guys this is who we're looking for. Look at the picture again. This is what he's known for. He might come out of a back window. And we, we, I, I alert them to the dangers of each individual that we're looking for and what they're capable of. In this case, as in most drug-related cases, they do not know what to expect. Hello? Fugitive squad, sir. Will they find a passive, drugged-out woman or a maniac in dire need of a fix? Nothing can be assumed, and every possibility should be considered. When you're doing a hit, you usually want to do it early in the morning, and I'm talking between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's usually when you do your hits, because that's when you're going to catch people in bed, sleeping, they're usually less prone for violence at that hour in the morning. Open it now. She's not here, and I have nothing to do with her. She just happens to be my girlfriend's daughter. The woman they are looking for is not there. The only one present is her mother's boyfriend. She was here yesterday. That's the room she stayed in. Which room? This room? Yeah. He says he knows nothing, but Walter is not buying any of it. If this guy wants to play mind games, he picked the wrong guy to play with. You think her mother will tell me where she's at? Mm, yeah, probably. She wants her to get, probably get her. It looked like a spot that people used to hide up there. Was, uh, yeah. Jason, yeah. That's the boyfriend. While Walter continues to try and untangle the man's web of lies, Ali and Reggie search for evidence leading to the woman's current whereabouts. What they find will give Walter the final leverage he needs to find the fugitive. Yeah. 
the owner of the house is about to sing like a canary. This is in our bag. That's, that's what, uh, see that in the UPS sign? That's funny. Look at the little straw that she does the cocaine with. There's another bag. She probably did a fix before she left the house. Well, it's in your right. house. There is drugs then? Yeah. yeah. What's in there? Dope. The way to get someone to cooperate with what you, with you, is get something on them. Well, we had a case where we went in the house, we found drugs in the house. The guy, the person we were looking for wasn't there, but there was someone in the house. So at that point, we took advantage, because at first, the guy was acting like he didn't know anything. After we found all these drugs in the house, you know, found a few dope bags, I tell the guy, I'm like, wait a minute, what's, what's this here? You know, this and that. And I pressured him with that. And all of a sudden, he knew everything. All of a sudden, she gets home after 3 o'clock, and her mother lives at this address, and, you know, you can stay if you need, if you want to wait for her. So a lot of times what you want to do is you want to get dirt on the person you're dealing with and then use that as leverage to get them to cooperate with you and what you want to get done. And who else lives in James Ferguson? Her grandmother. She is either. So you're saying there's a possibility she could be staying at her grandmother's house? That's not warm. Let's get out of here, guys. Okay, we're gone. Going out the back. Have a good night. All right. Hey, I'll, I'll be in touch with you if I hear anything. Give me a call and as soon as you know something. Like I said, I'm sorry I couldn't be more helpful. But... Okay. Uh, I need a, re a listing for this number. 609. The reason a parent, parents will give up their child or loved one, a lot of time it may be because they're just tired of their child constantly being a problem. You may have a child that just is always getting arrested for possession of drugs or getting high. They may feel that that's the way to help them because they may, they may have spent years trying to talk to them in and out of rehabs and it just doesn't help and they feel sometimes that, you know what, my child needs to be in jail. This is where he's at, go get him. And that's exactly what happens here. The grandmother knows that the fugitive has got an appointment in the morning at the Office of Motor Vehicles. For Walter, it's only a question of getting there on time and setting up a trap to catch her. We're gonna go in to see if she's inside. We'll be right back out. With his men in place, the waiting game begins. After a long, sleepless night, the hunt is in its final stage. There she go in the back seat. That was her in the back seat. Where that car go? Where that car go? My approach to arresting a male or a female is always the same. They're all they're all criminals. I'm not interested in what your offense is. Do you know where there's a money grab? Put your cigarette down, honey. Put your cigarette down. You got a warrant for your arrest. For what? You didn't go to court. What court? What are you talking? Okay, all right. What is this? From Plainsboro. You want to take right. her purse? Take her purse. Is it okay that he that he holds on to that? Yes. Okay. You're Jay. Who are you? Who? I'm this guy. Please. Okay. All right. You miss court in uh, Plainsboro, honey. We got a warrant for your arrest. Where the bail bonds is. The cuffs okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be careful. Don't, don't hit your head. There you go. 14 years I've been bounty hunting, and I think what drives me is the adrenaline, the adventure of it. There's no way to explain what it feels like when you hunt someone that doesn't want to be found. And, and, and you hunt them for, it could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, a few months, a few years. When you finally catch them, it, it, it's the biggest high that you'll ever get in your life. As long as I can walk and think, I'll be hunting. This is all I know how to do. 